Okay, so let's look at some limits of trig functions, and that's going to be our topic 15. And what's in this box is um, some memorization that you need to do. If you remember on assignment 13, you actually found these limits graphically, this one and this one. So uh, I won't derive those again, but you looked at a calculator and saw that those limits were true. And I want you to be clear that I can actually flip the fraction so I could have the limit instead of sine of x over x, if I have x over sine of x, that would also be equal to 1. And if I flipped this fraction, it would also be equal to 0. And then I just wrote one more for you to realize is it's not always just going to be the sine of x. And so notice that there are three places that have the same thing. Notice that this is 3x, the sine of 3x, and this is 3x. So if all of those things have the same argument, or the same 3x, 4x, 5x, 6x, whatever, then that limit is also 1. So what I'm saying is, when you have trig, I certainly do not mean that everyone is going to come down to one of these special limits. You're going to attack the trig just like we did the other ones. You're going to first try direct substitution, and sometimes that's going to work. So in example one, if you do the tangent of pi and do direct sub, is that a number that you can get? Yes. Off the unit circle, the tangent of pi is zero, and that works fabulously from uh, direct substitution. You try example two. That should be a fast one as well. So, of course, I have the cosine of 5 pi over 3. And from the unit circle, again, that's a memory thing. The cosine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. So my limit is 1 half. Now, what happens in example 3 when I do direct sub? When I do direct sub, I'm going to get the sine of 0 which is 0, and I plug in a 0 on the bottom, and I have 0 there. Notice I am not putting that next to the equal. AP is very, uh, very, very picky about setting a limit equal to the indeterminate form. And so I'm going to put it down below there. So what happens, what am I to do when I get 0 over 0? That's when these special limits come into play. I'm going to have to manipulate this, and I'm going to have to uh, work with it until I can either do direct sub or it is a special limit. So let me start attacking this one. This one is actually not that bad. I'm going to erase this. Uh, well, I thought I was going to erase. It's not, not liking me. Erase, little son. All right. Never mind, not erasing. Um, how could I change, manipulate? I can't change what it is, but I can think of it in a different way. So I'm going to write the limit as x goes to 0. Now, how else could I write that? Well, that 7 and that x really aren't attached. So I technically could write 1 seventh times the sine of x over x. I mean, isn't that, I mean, if I simplify that inner, that would be the same thing. So again, I haven't changed the problem. Uh, I just have written it in a smarter way. And by our properties of limits, we know that if I'm taking the limit of two different functions, it's like taking the individual limits and multiplying together. Now I'm writing a lot of work on this one, but I, because it's our first one and I, I want you to see it, I probably wouldn't do this much work on the other ones, especially if it's multiple choice. But I want you to see that what I'm really doing is that right there. 
So I can take the individual limit, the limit of any constant is 1 7th. This whole limit, this whole thing, that's equal to 1. And so I get a final answer for that one of 1 7th. What I do not like to see on papers, and AP would not like to see on papers, so don't do this. Is if it's again, you know, they don't grade your multiple choice, uh, but I'm saying if it's free response, I do not like it on free response when I see this and people do this and go, oh, that that's one. The sine of x over x is not one. The limit as x goes to zero is one. Do not mark that out and 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 make that one. Now I would be okay with after this line. You, you know that this is what you're doing and you go straight to this. I'm okay with that. I can live with that. But do not mark this out and call that one when it's not, because it's not one. Okay? All right, I'm going to erase. I finally figured out the eraser here. So let me get me a clean, clean spot for the next one. All right. So this next one, what do we think about tangent? Well, again, I'm going to do direct sub, remembering that I'm not going to put equal 0 over 0 because AP hates that, but I can either do that in my head, and in my head, I might even do it out here. Direct sub, the tangent of 0 is 0, and of course over 0. So again, I'm getting 0 over 0. So what can you think to do to manipulate that guy? Oh, I don't know, maybe... All I know really what to do is maybe change tangent. So if I change tangent, that's going to be the limit as x goes to 0. And that would be the sine of x over cosine of x. That's tangent. And I'm going to go ahead and write and kind of do two steps. Rather than over x, dividing by x is like multiplying by 1 over x. So I think that's a little bit better. Now what are you seeing? I mean, if I still do the limit in this step as x goes to 0, I'm still getting 0 over 0 because the top would give me 0 and having that x would also give me 0. So I still can't do direct substitution. But hopefully you see that special limit coming into play. You're like, oh, well, let me, again, let me just write this in a better way for me to do the limit. So the limit as x goes to 0... I'm going to put the sine of x over the x and do the 1 times cosine. Have I changed the problem? Nope, because if I multiply this argument, I'm getting the same thing as I did here. I'm getting sine over x times cosine. I'm just pairing different ones together. Now I think you have the idea. And I'm going to go straight to evaluating the limits. I, I hope that's okay. I'm taking the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. That is a special limit of 1 times. Now, what is the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over cosine x? Well, I can do direct substitution on him. So if this x is going to 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. So that limit, I got... 1, and I get a final answer of 1. So I want to be very clear that this guy became, I got that because of the special limit from memory. This guy I got by doing, I'll abbreviate, direct sub. And that's what you have to get down to. You have to get down to either a special limit or direct substitution. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, example five, we're so close. We have sine of 4x, but man, I this 4, you know, back up here, when I had this 7, I could kind of just split those up. This 4x, when it's in the argument position, there's nothing I can do, okay? There is not much I can do there to bring the 4 out in front of whatever. And I will say with this one, if I ask you to guess at the answer, you could probably guess at the answer and, and be right. And if it's multiple choice, you're golden. But free response, notation is a big deal. And there will be some free response. So we have to make sure that we're writing it correctly. And here's where 
uh, you have to realize this has to be sine of 4x. So there's not anything I can do to change that. So I'm going to put the 4x. Here's what I have. Now, if this one has to be 4x, what do I wish were on the bottom? Well, man, I wish there was a 4 because, remember, we talked about all three places have to have the same thing for the limit to be 1. So if this argument is 4x, man, I wish I could have a 4 right there. And do I have the power of just putting in a 4? I mean, can I multiply by that 4 on the bottom? Well, no, because I'm, I'm changing the problem. The only thing legal for me to multiply by is 1. So if I put a 4 on the bottom, I have to also put a 4 on the top. Now, if you look what I have there, and you can put over 1 if you like the look of that, that's fine. If I were to simplify this argument, do I get back to this exact same thing? Yes. So I didn't change the problem. And you go, wait a minute. You've only got... You've got two of them now being the same, but this guy out here still says x equals zero. Do I have to do something different for that? Well, let me ask you this. If x is getting close to zero, so x is point zero 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 one, would it be true if I multiplied that by four, point zero 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 four, is that still going to zero? And of course, that answer is yes. So the nice thing is that four, I can put that in and have the power to do that because as x goes to zero, 4x is going to zero. When it's getting infinitesimally small, 4x is also going to zero. So I can put that in, but I need to so that all, my, all three of those are going to be the same. And then I can take the limit. This limit, when I take it, would be one because of a special limit. Then you're taking the limit of a constant. Well, the limit of a constant, it doesn't even really matter what this is. The limit of any constant is that constant. And so I get a limit of 4. QL. Last one. You try example 6. And see what you think on example 6. I will tell you there's more than one way to do example 6. So stop the video and work on that one and then come back when you're done. All right. So here's the deal. I'm, I'm spreading it out because I very well may show you both ways. Okay. Well, let me do direct sub. I should do that to make sure I couldn't just get an answer. The limit as x goes to 0, again, that's 1, so 1 squared minus 1. Okay, I get 0 over 0, so I have to manipulate. Well, one person would say, oh, I see this right here, cosine squared minus 1. I see factoring. That's just what, that's what I see. So I'm going to split that into cosine of x minus 1 and cosine of x plus 1. Like, that's what jumped out at me. And then you're like, okay, manipulate, special, special limit, or direct substitution. What's the other special limit that we haven't talked about? It's 1 minus cosine over x. Okay, or x over, but in this case, since I have it on top, I need 1 minus cosine over x. So let me manipulate any, this a little bit more and say this, instead of saying cosine minus 1, I could factor out a negative, and I'm just going to put it with the other guy because I'm multiplying so it doesn't matter. If I factor out a negative, I could change that to 1 minus cosine, and I'll put the over x there. I'll put the negative with this guy, and that would be cosine of x plus 1. Okay, so this is a multiplication, not a, not a subtraction. This is a negative, okay, which I could have distributed, but I just was showing you where I got it. So I hope that you can see that these are the same things. Again, I factored a negative one out of that one and just put it here. 
So I have 1 minus cosine over x times this thing. Now what do I get? Let me evaluate that limit. When I take the limit of this one that is a special limit, which is 0, you cannot stop there because I know you think, oh, well, if 0 times anything is 0. I will tell you another indeterminate form is 0 times infinity. And so you've got to make sure that you actually get a number, and I would be looking for that uh, specific number. So I would be looking at your work to make sure that you have that. So don't just put, oh, it's 0 then. Let's see what the number is. If I take the limit as x goes to 0 of this piece, I can do that with direct substitution because, again, cosine of x is, cosine of 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so that would be times negative 2, and, of course, I get 0. Why I said there were two ways is that somebody else might say that Oh, well, instead of cosine squared minus 1, instead of me seeing factoring, I saw that as an identity, which would be negative sine squared of x over x. And then I split it up so that I would have sine of x over x times negative sine of x. And then my, I could evaluate the limits. This limit would be 1. But when I do direct substitute, direct sub on that one, the sine of zero is zero, and I also got zero. So there, know that with the trig, is there certainly, for a lot of problems, there's definitely more than one way that you could get the final answer. And so you have to realize that. So if you're looking at my answer keys or you're comparing to a friend's or whatever, you need to make sure you understand that yours might not look the same, but you both be correct. So let's just kind of sum up some thoughts and have on your paper so that you can um, refer back to this. With, when you see trig functions, when direct substitution yields the indeterminate form, what are you going to use? You're going to use manipulation. You are going to rearrange, you're going to simplify, you're going to think trig identities, you're going to uh, work with it a little bit. You're going to use manipulation until you can do what? You can recognize a special limit or you can perform direct sub. That's what you keep working down so that you can do it. And you do need to watch, I'm gonna put a big star, watch your notation. If it is on free response, okay, I will take off for notational things. We've gotta to learn to write things mathematically. AP is very picky on your notation, and so I'm gonna be picky. So you've gotta write things mathematically uh, right. All right, but that's it. We're done. Y'all have a good one.